Yo! Did y'all know that it's 100% illegal to try to communicate with dolphins at your local nearby beach? Did you know that if you get caught doing this, you can get fined up to $100,000 or sent to jail for up to a year? Now, the video clip I'm about to show you is for entertainment purposes only. I repeat, entertainment purposes only. And it has me raising eyebrows on what's the real reason why they've made it illegal to try to communicate with dolphins. Use your own discernment, comment below, but let's discuss it. This video you're about to watch is quite an eyebrow raiser. Um, Dr. Paul Spong was trained in a, he was trained in a college to, uh, to be a whale trainer. And uh, he became the whale trainer at the Vancouver Zoo. And he started training his killer whale there. But then after the killer, after about a year, he began to realize that the whale was training him. It became real obvious to him. He says, he says wait a minute. The whale's actually, you know, having more influence on his life than he's having on, on that one. And, uh, and the whale uh, got him to uh, tell him about all the, the whales that were being killed all over the world and, and started to influence him to... Um, stop the whaling in the world so what did he do he started greenpeace he was the founder of greenpeace he got the six people together it's one table which i got to introduce with each one of these people and uh and got them to go out and start this movement and he went out on the ships and he'd been arrested like a hundred times he'd go out these ships and just start shutting down everything <laughs> and they'd arrest him trying to get him stopped and they did they eventually got to stop the whaling in i don't know how many countries there's like lots and lots of countries that, that Greenpeace has stopped all of this on. And uh, one day he came to me and he said, uh, the whales told him, he says, he says that he believed that he was in direct communication with them telepathically, that he could uh, just talk to them. He could tell them in his head to do any of, the, any of the things that he wanted them to do in the water and they would just do it. And he got to the place where he was, uh, he just knew that it was just like talking. And, uh, and they told him, that there was no such thing as an individual whale or an individual dolphin in the world. That they were really cells in a larger body of consciousness. And that uh, communication occurred that all there had to be, if there was a dolphin, there only needed to be another dolphin within a thousand mile radius. And that dolphin could communicate to the whole through that one. In other words, they did have a thousand mile limit in their communication. And the, this whale wanted to prove this to him. He says, I will prove to you that this is true. So he wanted to, he asked me if he could have my house. I had a house in, in 450 miles inland on this place called Kootenai Lake. And he says, can I borrow your house for the winter? <laughs> so I gave it to him. And uh, he went in and he was going to set up a sensory deprivation tank to uh, float in there to get still enough to be able to make the chain make the communication but he never even put it together and uh, so I came back uh, a few months later three or four months later and <laughs> he had removed a few walls of my house <laughs> it was a funny feeling I'll tell you and, and put these like, windows there that weren't there before and things it was really beautiful but it was shocking <laughs> and, uh, uh, and he had still not made contact he said, I need more time, I need more time. And I said, well, okay. So, but I was there, you know, so we were all living together. Him and his wife were living there, and me and my wife were, li were living there, and my kids. And uh, uh, about two weeks later, he used to have, though if anybody, who knows Dr. Paul Spahn? You know Paul Spahn? Yeah. He's got kind of short hair now, and he looks very kind of professional-like. But he used to have really long hair and a really long beard And uh, in those days. And... Um, he came in the, in to the room one morning after about two weeks, and he had shaved his beard off on one side of his head and he cut the hair short on one side of his head. <laughs> and uh, I said to Paul, uh, I know something's up. <laughs> I'm sure of it. <laughs> he says, yeah, I made contact last night. And he says, I'm sure that I did. I, I did it. He says, they told me that I was going to be uh, a, a large influence in the world in all of this. 
and that uh, I had to look res respectable. <laughs> it's just the, so today is my transition day. <laughs> so for that day, he walked around half and half, and the next day he shaved off the other side. And uh, what they told him was, is the way they were going to prove it was he said that he was to go to this bay north of Vancouver, a very specific spot, and he was to... Uh, 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 go there with uh, uh, video equipment and everything so that he could prove what was about to happen. And he was to tell his people, he had a whole group of people that worked with him, he was to tell them what was to happen so that there would be like no backing out of this whole thing. And, um, and that on a certain day, at a certain time, which I think was 12 noon or a certain day, all the whales, of which there were about a hundred of them, of a certain species, would come into this bay, would swim up to the shoreline, lift out of the water and look him in the eyes. And that's exactly what happened. He went up there with about 30 people and they put their microphones in the water and everything and they sat around and they waited for this time. And sure enough, all these whales came swimming up to the shore, lifted out and looked him in the eyes. <laughs> and obviously he was never the same. <laughs> He started the Orca Lab, which was started in that very spot, and he's been totally been merged into whale research ever since then, and um, on his own, not using through the governments or anything else like he did before. And uh, he spends all his time. Uh, I taught him how to play the silver flute, and spends all his time out in canoes with him, playing flutes to them, and, and uh, communicating with them that he's now learned how to do. And. Uh, and so the whales, are, have a, they have an extraordinary level of awareness. Uh, we can't really talk about it because when we, uh, uh, later I'm going to try to tell you, when I talk about the electromagnetic spectrum and light and all these other kinds of things when we get into this.